So welcome back. In this project, I'm going to show you how to build a solar-powered Raspberry Pi security camera. So all you need is these few parts and a lot of software, a lot of open source software and a lot of time. So you opt for this, then this might be a better solution than the Eufy cam, the Arlo cameras and everything, everything else that's been floating around the market recently. Uh, so stay tuned and let's get started. That's a bad intro. Um, so I built this project actually almost a year ago and this is uh, an updated version of the project so I'm going to be talking about the things that went wrong uh, and the things that I think we should be improving uh, for this iteration iteration of the project. So the first thing we obviously need is a Raspberry Pi. It can be any Pi, it can be the number three, number four. I believe that uses a bit, way bit more, <laughs> way bit, a bit more power. But for this application really the lowest powered uh, lowest, uh, in a sense, of processing power device is sufficient. So even the Raspberry Pi Zero should be fine. Because all we're looking for is the camera module compatibility and the Wi-Fi connection to your network, to your home uh, network. Then obviously the second one is we need a battery. So I went for this battery. Uh, it's a lead acid battery. It's 12 volts. Um, and the reason for not going with anything with lithium ion or the modern battery is that this is going to be a stationary application and we're going to be pretty much trying to keep this battery full. They're really cheap, they're very heavy, heavy as well. Obviously Raspberry Pi can't accept the 12 volts, so we need something in the middle. So what we're going to build is this little um, uh, power adapter cable. Uh, this one actually plugs onto the uh, Raspberry Pi uh, expansion port uh, directly on the 5 volt rail and this one goes on top of uh, the battery here or the solar charge controller, which is the part number two. The solar charge controller. This is a device that takes the energy from the sun, from the photovoltaic panel, uh, and that DC voltage that comes out of it, which is usually in a range of something to zero to, uh, let's say, 36 volts, that one converts it to something that is suitable for charging this lead acid battery. So this lead acid battery, that requires approximately 14 volts or something, which is configured into this device, that voltage and that logic for maintaining the battery fully charged. You have two pins, which is the, the positive and negative terminals from the solar panel uh, incoming into this solar charge controller. So here is the solar panel, that's the battery, the two plus and minus terminals to the battery, and then the load, and the load in our case is this uh, power converter for Raspberry Pi. And that's it, and then, I mean, obviously the solar panel, uh, I believe I got them uh, like three years or four years ago. These are uh, 100 watts peak. So the maximum energy you can get out of them in the most the sunniest day ever is 100 watts. But essentially, yeah, these are around uh, 100 bucks the time I bought them. Uh, I believe they're getting cheaper and cheaper every day. And uh, these are, as you can see, these are flexible. Um, so you can mount them in, 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 in different locations and different places. So let's get started. So let's talk about this case here. So it does look like a security camera. You can see this is the modification of the, the design failure that I had made. Um, essentially this plastic leg that comes to this, because it's supposed to hold like an empty box, then it's very kind of fragile. When I had the camera up, uh, this leg just broke off. So really, when you buy these, you probably get two, or you can figure out some other way to attach it. Uh, there's nothing, I mean, wrong with really putting any kind of a a metal plate or something that you can screw through this plastic case in here. Uh, when you buy them, uh, <laughs> there go the screws. They have four screws at the back. They're very mighty models of this. They're pretty much the same. The price is the same. It's called dummy security camera. Well, I got them in, in my local um, hardware store. So you don't really need to order from like Amazon or um, Banggood or AliExpress. So you unscrew these uh, four th screws at the back, but essentially you have four more screws on the front as well. And when you get this open, the first time there's gonna be some parts in there because it's trying to kind of fake the security camera. So there's a lot of LEDs. You can see here at the top, there's actually a battery holder. So the idea is that when you put this out as, a, as it comes from the store, it actually kind of like blinks or something. So it, people think it's actually recording. So when you're working on this, this is supposed to go outside. So any weather that you have in your area, for me that being snow and rain for half of the year, we have to account for that. So when you've removed the front and the back cases, then what we're going to see here is a Raspberry Pi that is actually 
uh, using this Velcro types. Just a little piece of Velcro um, uh, that has the glue, like a sticky tape on the other side. And then the other one I have on this Raspberry, the half of a Raspberry Pi case. So I just put it, um, only the back case in. It still holds it in, in place correctly. There's another, another Velcro, uh, a double-sided one. So there's a piece um, kind of put on the, the back of the camera unit and another one uh, to the case. Very sufficient to hold it in place like that. So you'll take it like this and you put it in uh, your case. And you see it literally like, it's a perfect fit. There's not much room on the sides. This one, before I opened it the first time, it didn't have these side openings here. This is basically a backup port for powering it using the regular USB plug. So the benefit of this one you get is obviously this somewhat uh, weather resistant casing. Uh, unless you make holes like that and you put it up upside down like that. Uh, well, facing upwards. So really, yeah, that's it for the camera module. Very simple and straightforward design, nothing to glue. Using the Velcro tapes, that's it. So in my first design, I had uh, this battery case together with the Raspberry Pi mounted somewhere above here. With the battery inside, this got really, really heavy. Moving all around and then one day it just broke off. So really the lesson there is to keep the battery power really separate from the camera and the solar panel. The camera can be mounted somewhere up high, but when you have to work on the power supply or restart with the Raspberry Pi, you can literally just do it from the battery box by opening it up, high, up here and reconnecting the battery and connect it back again. So let's talk about the power for Raspberry Pi when you're powering it from a 12 volt battery like this. Uh, what you really need is uh, to bring down the voltage to the 5 volts that's needed for the Raspberry Pi. And for that, you can get these uh, power converters. Uh, there you go. So at the back of it, you'll see it says in and out. The two wires coming from the battery go into this one side where it says in. So that can be arbitrary voltage. Usually these accept up to whatever, 20, 36 volts or something. So this is this kind of standard pinout connector. So these ones go on top of the plus minus five volt uh, pins here. So this power converter stays in here in this case. And the thinking or the reasoning behind it is that uh, when we're getting the power up from the battery or the solar panels, the further it has to travel at higher voltage, uh, the lower current at the same time. So that's better for the wiring. So let's talk about assembling all this together in one piece. This is something that I built for the solar panel. Uh, so this is a frame like that. It's literally built from uh, these wooden uh, pieces that I cut to length and use these metal um, angle connectors and just place them in accordingly so that the panel could be uh, screwed on top of there. This kind of arrangement allows us to have the frame always have the solar panel facing the south while the camera would be attached in a way in a kind of protected area beneath this uh, solar panel so all the direct drain wouldn't hit the camera unit and the battery unit so the only two things that are going to be attached to this frame is the solar panel and the camera unit the wires from the solar unit are gonna run down to the battery box and up again to the camera unit um, under the solar panel. It is heavy, the construction is heavy, the panel itself is not very heavy. If you get the hard one, which is not the flexible, so it has a glass and an aluminum frame, these are way more heavier. So uh, for this kind of installation, the lighter the construction, the easier it's gonna be for you to attach it. So that's it for the hardware part of the video. In the next video, I'm gonna show you the software part of the camera setup. So you can remotely connect to the camera, record some time-lapse videos, assemble them together and preview them or view them later. Thanks for watching this video. Give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if you're not going to build this project and see you next time.